Welcome, I'm Lori Ditto, and this is Make Today Count. You know, eternity is coming, and making sure that your days add up in a way that you want them to is really important. In today's vision, we're going to look at what it is like to be afraid. But before we do, I want to give you a little bit of a recap. You know, we looked at the very first time I went to heaven, and God wanted to take away pain. And how important it is that we give him our whole life to get rid of that pain. And then in the second one, we looked at being trained inside of freedom. You know, God has given us freedom and then we need to be trained in how to keep it so that we don't fall into being slaves again to sin. But today, I'd like us to get a little bit more of understanding of how the enemy is going to try and trick us. But we have to understand sin. It is lawlessness. It is rebellion. There is a difference when you're feeling it, though. So condemnation, which comes from the enemy, it feels like, you know, you are the wrong thing. And God brings conviction when you are in sin. And that conviction lets you know you've done the wrong thing. Now, the two are very different. Conviction says, turn around, run to God, let him help you fix it. Remember, help. Help is a great prayer that gets us into, right into our power alley where we can be set free. So I'd like us to look at Jesus Christ as the strong tower. Proverbs 18.10 says that Jesus is a strong tower. And what does that mean in its terminology? So to be a strong tower means that once you get into it, that it's fortified, that you can never be overtaken. It is a place of great safety, a lot of safety. And so... If you're in trouble, then you need to get to Jesus, who is the strong tower. And what's amazing about this is, so if you think of a building and you're in trouble and you're running to get there as fast as you can, God will pick up that building, that tower, and run towards you, cutting the distance in half. And so that's the heart of our God, to save us, to help us. Now, in direct contrast, we have the devil, and he likes to deal in strongholds, which a stronghold is very different. You see, it ties you down. I remember the very first time I went to hell when I came back, I felt like a hot air balloon, but my life was being tied to all these different sins. The... A stronghold is something that grabs a hold of you and will not let you go. Now, the Bible says that there are 16 strongholds. And you can study these out. Um, there's a spirit of antichrist, a spirit of bondage, a deaf and dumb spirit, a spirit of death, a spirit of divination. There's a spirit of error, a familiar spirit, a spirit of fear. There's spirit of haughtiness heaviness, infirmity, jealousy, a spirit of lying, a spirit of perversion, a spirit of seduction, and a spirit of whoredom. And, and you know, you can get a lot of manifestations that come underneath these biblical strongholds, but that's what the devil deals in, where Jesus deals in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Can you feel it getting lighter? Gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And so if we can keep the two in understanding that they both have an agenda, God's agenda is for you to be a child of God and to be free. And the enemy's agenda is to do whatever he has to do to hurt God. And he wants to use me and you to do that. So of all of those strongholds, I'd like us to look at the spirit of fear. And in, let me find it, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Did you know that a spirit of fear 
will paralyze you and it will stop you from obeying God. That's why we have to pay attention. What spirits are we listening to? And when we feel afraid, what should we do? Well, I just want to tell you right off the bat what I do when I get afraid. I close my eyes and I count to five. And if I'm really afraid, I'll count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, open my eyes and just do it. And every time I am so amazed at the power of Jesus to show up and help me. And so I want to, I want to just give you that. You need to be able to just shut your eyes and count to five. And sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I only count to three. But God will work miracles for us. Reminds me of when I was a little girl. <laughs> My mom would give me the same task. And, you know, I mean, this task, I never got comfortable with it. She wanted me to take some money, go down to the store and get a gallon of milk and come home. But this is what it meant. Now, when I was a little girl, you could do stuff like that. But it meant I had to walk to the end of my street, remember to turn right and walk down three blocks. I remember with the house that was white to turn left to walk to the end of that street. And there was a store on the right hand side. And once I got there, I would go inside and I would take my mom would give me um, some money take the money and the milk was always too high. So I would have to get somebody to help me get the milk down. And then I had this task of getting the milk and the change home. And you might not can feel my heart racing while I'm telling you this, but we all have one of those memories where we had something to do that we just weren't sure about being able to do. And that's what happened. So the issue was, you're going to give me this money. What if I drop the money? What if I get lost along the way? Because, you know, I'm a talker. And uh, what if I'm not paying attention? Can't find the White House. What if I turn left? And what if I'm on the wrong street? What if I get the wrong kind of milk? And then, worst of all, what if I can't find my way home? But you know what? My mom always had more confidence in me than I had in myself. And it never ended up that I got lost, but it's just one of those things where you listen to all of the things that could go wrong. Have you ever gotten yourself on that wheel? Like this could go wrong and then this could go wrong and then this could go wrong. Well, yeah. Have you ever gotten on the wheel where somebody is going to die? What if that somebody is you? All of this is fear and I've done it. I'm sure that I'm sure that somebody, you know, has done this kind of fear, but we need to know how to take this stuff captive, which will lead us into the vision I'd like to share with you. You know, the devil wants you to think wrong things. He wants you to think he's stronger than God. He wants you to think, hey, Lori, God doesn't love you. He wants me to think that God isn't good all the time. And maybe he's not always good to me. These are terrible lies that Satan will present. And he wants us all to think these things. He wants us to do wrong actions. Um, he wants you to willfully sin in an action. He wants you to not accept the gifts. What kind of gift? A big one would be the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of speaking in tongues. It's very, very powerful. Whenever I get afraid, number two, after I close my eyes and, and count to five, I pray in the spirit, nice and loud. And when I get done, that fear doesn't own me anymore. You know, there's a story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they did the even if. Even if my God doesn't save me, I'm still not going to worship you. And they were thrown into a pit of fire. And when we come back, I want to jump back in to looking at all of this fear because we're going to overcome it together. We 
we're looking at overcoming fear today. And in a vision, Jesus took me to help me understand what it is and how to overcome it. So in this vision, when I arrive, I am in a very large living room. I mean the kind of living room that maybe 500 people could sit down in, comfy chairs, wonderful love seats. And I happen to be on the floor playing a board game with all kinds of friends. And Jesus was there laughing, telling each other who he thought was going to win. I mean, it was a lovely time. And all of a sudden, Satan walked in and started talking about me. Oh, it was very scary because he was saying things like she doesn't she doesn't accomplish things. She doesn't fulfill things. You know, her energy always runs short. I mean, things that were really making me feel bad. And I tried to sneak a peek up and look at what Jesus was thinking. I want you to know something. We never know what another person is thinking. The best thing to do is to ask them, what are you thinking? But because I didn't want to really know what he was thinking, I just kind of sat there hoping Satan would leave. And finally he did. And then Jesus said my name, Lori, you know, when Jesus says your name, you will feel so special because you are. He said my name. He said, come here. So I went over and he, he said, I have something I'd like you to do for me. I said, okay. He says, I want to give you this. And he gave me some money. He said, I want you to go down to the store, get me a gallon of milk and bring it back. I'm sure he could see this is not what I want to do. Jesus, do you remember my mom used to have me do this? One time I was so scared. You know what I did? I sat down. I couldn't figure out my way home. So I just sat down. The milk got warm and everything. My mom had to come and find me. He just smiled at me. He said, would you do this for me, Lori? Well, you can't really say no. So I looked around thinking, well, maybe somebody else will want to do it. But they were all busy playing. So I said, well, Lord... Um, Satan's out there and I really don't want to go out there because, you know, Satan's out there and he says, you're in training, right? We took you to the classroom. Now I want to take you on this field study. I'm like, oh my gracious. So I take the money out of the Lord's hand and I walk out the door and I walk down some stairs. Now, let me tell you what this street looked like. The only thing I've ever seen in comparison that's similar is a street like you were in San Francisco. So it was a street that went at a deep angle. And every so often there was a new door and the door was a different color. And each door represents a new way that you can come to Christ. Now, I say that because your testimony of coming to Jesus and my testimony of coming to Jesus are two very different testimonies, but it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. And as I walked down the street, I saw beautiful doors with wreaths. Some had bright lights on it. Some doors only had a screen door and the door was open. And as I walked down, I'm trying to remember all of the houses on the street because I'm going to need to get home. And so as I walked, Satan was out there talking to me. You know you're going to lose that money. You know you're not going to find the store. You should just quit now. You didn't want to do this. You did this out of obligation. And I'm like, don't talk to me. Don't talk. Silence. In Jesus' name. And when Satan won't listen to you, he will have to listen in the name of Jesus. So as I was walking, these people were coming, walking towards me and they were explaining to me, I have an appointment with Jesus. Now, this street was, let's say, a mile long. 
squared. I knew that. And the inside of this mile long square was a playground where the children could be together safe inside this playground. And these people would stop me and they say, have you seen the green door? The green door that has a big, pretty, colorful frog on it. I'm supposed to meet the Lord in that door. Yes. Yes, I saw that door. Here, let me help you. And I would take them and I would go back up the street and I would find that door. That's the one you go right in. Oh, yeah, let's go get the milk. And I would walk along some more and then someone else would come and find me. And they would say, excuse me, do you know where the yellow door is? I'm supposed to meet the Lord in the yellow door, but I'm afraid I'm not going to find it. I've been out here looking and looking and looking. Yes, I've seen it. Let me help you. And I would take them and I'd walk and find the yellow door and I would come back. I got to go get to the store. And the devil would make fun of me. Look at you wasting all this time. I bet you don't even know where the store is. You should just quit. I was like, oh man, I hope Jesus isn't upset with me. So I held tighter onto the money. And there was construction. I turned the corner and there was all this construction. These doors were all being um, worked on. And right past those doors was the store. Well, hallelujah, I made it to the store. And when I got into the, the store, there were so many people there. I was like, I just need to get a gallon of milk, please. Oh, let us help you. Tell me, what is the Lord going to do with the milk? I was like, I don't know. Is he baking or is he cooking? I don't know. Is he pouring it out for people to have a drink? I'm like, I don't know. I was so afraid. I didn't ask anything. Have you ever been so afraid that you forget to ask a question? That's what was happening to me. And so they all helped me. Did he, did he say that he wanted skim milk? Does he want whole milk? Does he want organic milk? What kind of milk does he want? I don't, I don't even know. Just, just give me the whole milk. I'll just take that one. And I've got the milk. I've got the change. Okay, I'm halfway done. I walk out of the store and my pathway is blocked. I can't go back the way I came. Oh, no. This is terrible. I'm for sure going to get lost is what I'm thinking. And Satan just keeps whispering. Of course, you're going to get lost. You were never meant to do this. You can't do this. This task is too big. It's too important for a girl like you. I didn't know what else to do. So I just started walking. I remembered it's a one mile square. So I walked and walked and I looked at the doors, but I didn't take near as much pleasure in looking at the door. Because as I was walking along that way, I had been listening to Satan now for quite a long time. And on this side, there were children. You know, I'm the grandmother of 13 children. One lives in heaven now. And when a child needs something, you're almost always going to stop and help. At least that's how I am. So children needed help. And I didn't know where the doors were that they needed, but I slowed down enough because I want to help make sure that they get there. Finally, I'm at the edge of the corner and I turn, I'm on this side now, headed back and I'm walking and I'm walking and it feels like it's getting cold and it's raining. I'm just thinking I'm going to have to give up. I turned the last corner. I looked around, nothing looked familiar. I didn't know what to do, so I sat down. And I remembered having sat down before. Sat down because it just paralyzed me. It just took me out. It just made me quit. And when we come back, we'll figure out what's going to happen next. See you in a minute.
Welcome back. I was just explaining about having been in this vision. Let's just jump back in. You know what? I was so overwhelmed. I had come, come race down this side, made the curve, had no idea where I was. Nothing looked familiar. And so I sat down. And when I sat down, that is when Satan came and he said, told ya, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you that you are a failure? Didn't I tell you that you were a loser? Didn't I tell you that you couldn't do this? Didn't I tell Jesus all about you? You have let him down. And I just started to cry. Has that ever happened to you where Satan convinces you all the stinking thinking that's going on inside your own head? There I sat. And the milk is getting warm. And I'm not even sure I still have the change. But then people started coming out of the doorway, the red doorway, the doorway that shined a light so bright. Lori, Lori, here they all came. All these people that I had helped, the ones that I had taken to the green door, the one that I had taken to the yellow door, all of the children on the side. They were coming out the red door, the door that I had come out of. And if I had only walked maybe 15 more feet, I would have seen that door and known exactly where I was. Oh my goodness, I was so glad to see all those people. I, I tried to tell them, you just don't know what happened to me. It's okay. Come on with us, they said. Remember, the Lord sends them in twos. We need each other. They took my hand. They brought me in. I saw Jesus. I wasn't sure, do I look up in his eyes or do I look down in shame? I want to tell you something. Never, never look down in shame when you're, when you're in the presence of the Lord. Never look down in shame. He will help you. He will understand. And he gave you the task that he gave you because he believes in you. Sure, it may have been easier for somebody else to do. But as a believer, as a warrior, you're in training. And so I looked him in the eyes. How long, how long, God? Was I gone? He said, you were gone exactly as long as you needed to be gone. And I was so proud of you, he said to me. I was so proud of you, even though you had an urgent task. And I am a person. I I, I have tasks. I like to get them done. Even though you had an important task, you understood the need to help others. You see, God knows our heart. And so long as our heart does not give in to a heart of fear, to a spirit of fear, we can run to the strong tower. And he is that strong tower. And as I told you before, he will pick that tower up and run towards you. And that's what he did for me. You see, fear just wants you to think that you can't do it. Fear just wants you to have shame because if you'll look down and you can't see the love in his eyes, if you've ever been there, pray with me. Our God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. He loves us and I break fear off of you that the task that you have to do was given to you by God. And there is no condemnation in the Lord. There's only a spirit of conviction. He will help you. And he'll send friends to help you. And along your path, you're going to help other people. You need to understand that that spirit of fear that's trying to tie you up, you can cut it off by looking in the eyes of Jesus. God, I pray that you would let my friends see your eyes of fire, of love and endurance. 
great patience and that you believe in us. You believe in us to give us easy things or hard things. You believe in training us. And we commit to that. We commit to the potter's hand, to the strong tower. You'll never leave us, never forsake us. You'll always guide us. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.